I'm Stacy, and welcome back to the Tomarosa. We use a lot of tools here on the farm, and so we wanted to take a few minutes and talk about tools. Tools we think every farm or small homestead should have, as well as the top 10 tools that we cannot live without. First, the disclaimer. We are not a sponsored channel, so any of the tools that we show are tools we bought ourselves and are only sharing them because we like the way they work. I thought it would be a good time to talk about tools because I really can't use them. As you may notice, I had rotator cuff surgery about 10 days ago, so I'm just recovering from that. Before we talk about the top 10 tools that we can't live without, I want to say that I think every small farm or homestead should have a basic set of just mechanics tools. When we started farming, we didn't have a big mechanical ability. That's something we gained through experience uh, as we got into it more. And you may be in the same boat. In addition to a mechanics tool set, it'd probably be a good idea if you have some basic woodworking tools too. These are all tools that we built our entire farm with. That circular saw and that drill driver set. So now, on to our top 10. The first tool that we cannot live without is the knife. So we carry two types. Uh, a lot of times we carry just the foldable utility knife. They're really convenient. They fit in your pocket and they just take disposable razor blades so when they get dull it's easy to switch them out. Secondly, uh, we carry multi-tool. So this is a Leatherman. I've tried lots of different brands. I've tried Gerber and Sog and I've always just liked Leatherman the best. The second tool that we highly recommend is a headlamp. This was a lifesaver this winter when I was going out and feeding the cows. It allows you to have your hands free. You can turn it on and off easily. We also opted to buy a rechargeable one, so you're not always having to get new batteries. Tool number three is a thermometer. If you have animals, definitely an animal thermometer. If you're just raising crops, you should know what your soil temperature is. Thermometer and temperature is one of the first things that we'll check if we think something's going on with our animals. We bought this particular thermometer by Sharp Temp off of Amazon for about $40 or $50 and it is well worth it. We chose it because it had good reviews, it had a nice long stainless steel uh, probe and we've had no issues with it and it's worked flawlessly. We don't think any farm could live without a weather station. Now you might not be lucky enough to host a university weather station where you can access that data on your smartphone or computer at any time. But there are a lot of higher end home weather stations that you can buy for your small farm or homestead. Davis Industries makes a good quality product. Uh, we use them a lot in the Coast Guard for weather information. Also, if you're in the state of Washington and you have an ag weather net station near you, which is what this is, you can access the data for the nearest weather station uh, to you. If you live near an airport, you can usually access that weather data. So there are other avenues to get the data to help you farm better. The next item we couldn't live without is our Gallagher fence indicator. It clips on your electric wire, and then you have a ground wire that you just stick into the soil, and it flashes this red light. They say that if the red light's flashing, that means you have good animal control. But what we really like about it is we can see this red light flashing at night from our house window so we know the fence is definitely on and working. Daft animals. If you have farm equipment, you got to keep it lubricated and grease is an important part of that. For our next tool we couldn't live without, other than the grease gun itself, is our lock and lube which goes on the end of the grease gun. That's this device here. And what this does is this actually locks onto the Zerk fitting so you don't have to worry about it popping off. It's easy if you need to get into tight places because you can just lock it on and then you can just worry about pumping your grease. It's not too often that the internet convinces me that I need to buy something and they did a good job on this. I think I saw an ad online and decided to give it a try and I couldn't be happier. So highly recommend the lock and lube grease gun coupler. Most small farms and homesteads have a T-post pounder for putting those posts in the ground. But if you ever have to take them out, we really love our T-post puller. 
There's nothing worse than trying to wiggle out a stuck T-post in the ground. This makes short work of it. I think we paid about $30 at the farm store for it. And all it is is a lever. It's got this fitting that you slip over the post. And you can just pry it up. In addition to T-posts, we have a shackle on here. And so we can attach a short chain so we can use this for pulling wood posts or rebar posts as well. If you've ever found yourself in a situation where you're torquing on a T-post, wiggling it back and forth, trying to get good leverage, trying to pull it out of the ground, maybe the ground's compacted, maybe it's a little bit frozen, you would pay someone $30 to, to get that post out of the ground, and that's about what this thing costs. Next, we have the T-post clip tool. We have a little saying which is, always buy the special tool. This is so you can attach your T-post post clips onto your t-post you put this in and you twirl it around and you would think wow you know that's pretty easy I don't need a special tool for that I'll just use a wrench or something no when you're attaching about three of these to a t-post and you're doing multiple t-posts you're gonna want the special tool this one we painted orange so when you drop it in the grass you're gonna drop it in the grass you can find it the t-post clip tool definitely something we use on our farm and we would recommend if you're using T-post clips on T-posts. The next item is a come along. This is a one ton model. Uh, we also have a two ton model. But it, it's amazing how often you'll find yourself needing to move heavy things. And a come along is great for that. We've used it to stretch fences and load equipment that we've bought onto trailers and all sorts of different uh, moving related chores. So um, we think a come along is definitely something worth having on the farm. The next tool I couldn't live without is the Ford wrench. Uh, this is a type of adjustable wrench, but it opens up much wider than your traditional crescent type adjustable wrench. These are both open all the way. Sometimes, but not often, you need a wrench that has a wide opening. An example might be the nut on a trailer hitch ball. You normally wouldn't have a wrench uh, that size that will fit it. And many times a crescent wrench can't open that big, but a Ford wrench can. So highly recommend a Ford wrench for those obscure jobs that require uh, a large wrench. Why is this called a Ford wrench? Because in the early days of Ford Motor Company, you actually got tools with your car and it would come with a Ford wrench or a wrench like this. And then people just started calling it a Ford wrench. And I remember my grandfather telling me that with a Ford wrench, and a screwdriver, he could pretty much overhaul a Model T. This is our honorable mention. It's just a humble, basic AM FM radio. This one's been running on the same set of batteries for like a year or two. You know, we had to fix the antenna. It's had a couple of bad falls, but a radio when you're out working in the field or working on construction or whatnot, it just makes time go by faster. Plus you can normally get a weather report, etc. So as an honorable mention, we have the humble radio. Well folks, that's the top 10 tools that we cannot live without on the Tomarosa. Feel free to leave in the comments below any tools that you use on your small farm or homestead that you find invaluable. Also, we chose these tools because either we used them every day and so they were indispensable or when we really needed them, we really needed them. So that's how they made them on the list. Well, thanks for watching and make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss another video from the Tomarosa. Pretty sure we have no less than 10 hammers on our farm. That's not even including the crescent wrenches. Gravity check. Did you actually hit record this time? It is definitely recording. That was just a test from the first time. Yeah. Do you remember what to say? Okay, I'm all pretty. I'm all pretty. Let's go.